if you want to know how to flip cards in MLB The Show 22, you have come to the right place. Welcome to the Ants Larmstrong Flipping Tutorial. We're going to go over all the do's and don'ts of flipping here in MLB The Show 22. Whether you're new to the game, you're just attacking the marketplace for the first time. Maybe you've been playing MLB The Show for a while, you're new to the DD, or you just need a quick refresher on how to make stubs and how to work the market flipping in MLB The Show 22. You are in the right place. Let's hop into it. And I promise you, by the end of this video, you are going to understand flipping much better and be ready to capitalize on the market and make millions of stubs. Before we hop in, if you like these type of videos and you want to see more of these videos and get early access to stub making content, especially as we get into roster updates, market Mondays, things of all of those natures. And if you want exclusive access to our stub making discord room, consider becoming a channel member here. You can find the join button on the bottom of this video right now. It supports this channel and what I do in a massive way, being a full-time creator. Those things allow me to put out more and more content and give back to you guys even more. Now, when it comes to flipping, obviously the big thing we need to understand is our buy and sell orders. If you need some more information about that, I did make a marketplace tutorial. Be sure to check that out on my channel but in essence our buy orders is what we're going to come in and we are going to use buy orders to buy the card we're going to be flipping for mike trout right here 370k is that highest price on the right column i would come in at 370k in one stubs whenever i would buy mike trout i would then come in and create a sell order to sell that card now mike trout right here not a very good flip because remember you may see it on the screen right here seller will be taxed at 10 percent for all items sold Anytime you are flipping, be sure to take into account that 10% tax. Calculate that. It will not show up. That 398 990 number that this person has to sell Mike Trout, that does not include tax. When that card gets sold, then the tax will be taken into account. So while you are flipping, do not forget about the 10% tax that you have to remember to calculate your profits. You have to have a margin that is more than 10% to be able to make profit on these cards but that is in essence what we're doing we're going to be buying orders for low and then creating a sell order for high on cards that have a big gap between our two numbers here in our columns mike trout not a great example he's actually losing subs if you flip those we got about a 400 sub difference we're going to lose about 170 in profit so we'll make around 300 to 350 subs by flipping lanes and of course we'll create that buy order I would come in here i'd create a buy order for one three five eight right because one higher than that order over there once i fulfilled him i'd come in here and create a sell order for one less what we are going to be doing the flipping is taking advantage of those people who are fulfilling those orders somebody with a lance lane who comes in here and instantly sells him or someone looking to buy lance lane who comes in here and instantly buys him those are the people that we have to utilize to fulfill our flipping and we take advantage of taking the time to buy the card and then turn around and sell it for a higher price when you take into account those margins and that 10 percent tax we can start making our stubs at that point so again we can see the gap there you can kind of see how that math starts to play out we got to be able to find these margins that is the key to flipping find those margins and then you'll be able to start flipping a couple cards here and there i definitely do recommend starting slow of course though our very rough premise buy low sell high so that is the super 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 widespread idea we're gonna buy low we're gonna sell high find cards with a big gap between their two numbers and take into account that tax so let's come in let's talk about a couple of my do's and don'ts for flipping first thing we have to do when flipping is find what we're comfortable with maybe for you you are comfortable with live series cards that are gold so we're gonna come in here and we'll do 84 overall this is where you're comfortable with live series cards that are gold that are moving pretty quick small margins on these you're not making a ton of stubs but you're making a decent chunk of stubs on each of these you can easily make several hundred stubs a piece this is what you're comfortable with that is where you need to be find an area find a place in the market that you understand and are comfortable with and can learn that part of the market because that is going to expand your flipping ability so much for example if you are in tune with the live series market you know hey usually kevin gosman every day i've seen him he's selling for like three thousand subs on the buy now he's 1972 right now i can buy up like five six of them right now in a couple hours when his market corrects that three thousand price i sell him i'm making about seven to eight hundred subs per those flips it'll take me a little bit longer as i wait for that market to correct but that's where that market knowledge comes into play now of course to start out 
you're probably not going to have the market knowledge it is just one of those things that takes time you got to be in the market you got to see some prices one thing that can help us though is if we press y or triangle on our cards we can then have over to the marketplace it's not populated yet so we don't have much information but we can see our graph here on the left side of your screen you can see the buy now and sell now price over the next couple of days as this data populates we'll be able to see the trend line of those cards and the standard price point so i can quickly pull up this graph see hey kevin gosman usually does sell for three thousand subs that's been his average sell now price or buy now price i should say that's been his average buy now price for the last three to four days right now i can buy them at two thousand subs heck yeah i'm gonna capitalize on that i'll wait for that market to correct and sell them for three thousand so find where you're comfortable with start doing a little bit of research and understand some certain areas of the market and honestly start slow and just start flipping as you start flipping you'll remember hey yesterday i was i i, I was sold a trevor story yesterday for seven thousand stubs i bet you his market will correct to that here in a couple hours boom i can pick up myself a trevor story i can flip immediately for some stubs and feel confident that his price is probably going to be trending back upwards and he's not going to crash and i'm not going to lose any stubs on that in terms of flipping knowledge is power the more we know the more we understand what our standard prices are the better we're going to be able to be efficient in the marketplace second thing we're going to look at here is volume over quantity again sticking here with our live series goals the volume of these cards is very high they are going to move quick margins i'm not gonna lie pretty tight over here quite a bit not a ton of margins but we do have some here for a couple hundred stubs and we like that we like things that are going to move quick because the market is going to stay moving we're not going to be sitting on one card for a long time we don't want to sit on cards for a long time because their market can and will change sometimes it'll change down we don't want to sit on that card and then end up losing stubs so we definitely want to go with quantity over quality we would rather flip 10 cards for 500 subs a piece over a 30 minute window for 5,000 subs versus flipping one card that takes us 30 minutes to flip we only make 3,000 subs off of that. So for example here, come back out of our live series cards here. Take a look at the whole marketplace. We'll look at our legends and flashbacks. I like Craig Biggio right here. He actually has a margin, 71,000 on the buy now, 61,000 on the sell now. If you were to properly flip this, you would make about three to 4,000 stubs. That's a pretty solid return. But one, you're risking a lot of subs to do so. We'd have to risk 61,521 stubs and two, Greg Vigio is going to move slow. It is possible that it could take you three, four, five hours to flip this card just for those several thousand subs. You'd be better off taking that 61,000 stubs, spreading it out across a ton of orders that are going to be moving quickly and with a much higher volume. Even if the return per order is less, you're going to make way more stubs in the long run doing so. Which this is why if you've kept up with some of my other videos, I talk about having a big bankroll because the bigger bankroll we have, the more volume we can do in flipping, the more volume we do in flipping, the more stubs we can make long term. Our number three tip here, our third do. If you've been around the channel, you know this one. Like the old rotisserie chicken commercials, we got to set it and forget it. Put in your orders and forget about them, at least for a little bit of time. We don't need to come in and micromanage our orders. And the time I would spend, I come in here in my active orders, I'm like, oh, I got to sell this. I got to sell this. I got to sell this pro series. We got some equipment here. Let me go to my equipment here. Uh, pull up my equipment filter. Come into a rarity gold pro series. Where is this at? Where is it at? Where is it at? Because somebody undercut me by one stub. So let me come in here. Okay, I got the guy here. Somebody, somebody's gonna cut me my one stub. I gotta come in here. I gotta reset my order. I gotta cancel. I got, I gotta put it back in. And the time that you're spending doing that, you could just go out and put in other orders that are gonna flip as well. Whenever you come in, and I set this price. I have this shin guard here, and I'm selling it for two thousand one hundred and fifty-three subs. That is the best option available at that time. If somebody comes in and undercuts me by one sub, and the next guy comes in and undercuts that guy by a hundred, and then maybe even another hundred, and it keeps going down, I have to trust that the market is going to recorrect back to the location where I sold it and put in the order in place in the first place. So we are going to set it and forget those orders. We're not going to micromanage the time I spent micromanaging orders. I'm going to focus on putting in more orders because again, it's all about volume. Now, that doesn't mean we're just going to forget about them forever. If it's been several hours, maybe three to four hours, two to three hours, and you have a buy order that's maybe not going through, maybe you have some sell orders that it's not going through, not a bad idea to just come in here, 
I got some sell orders here from the other day. I can just come through here. I can cancel my orders and I can go back through and relist those or go back through and re put in my buy orders if they're not going through over a certain amount of time. But I don't want to be micromanaging them. I don't want to be sitting here updating the page. Is somebody undercutting me? Is somebody undercutting me? I'm wasting time doing this again. We need to be efficient with our time. We may not have the most time to play. Maybe we're working full time. Maybe we only get a couple hours. We don't need to be spending that time right? or managing our orders. Let's trust that the market is going to correct to wherever price you put it in to begin with. Set those orders, forget about them, move on to another order. Go play some moments, go play some conquest games. Come back in after a couple hours and if it's still not moving, okay, then we can cancel them and then just go through and relist those cards at that point. But we don't need to be spending all this time pounding our orders to make sure that they go through which goes into our next don't as well we don't have to memorize all of our orders either i don't have to have a carbon copy memory of every single card i bought every single card i've sold to make sure i'm going through and i'm selling everything my favorite thing to do right here i'm pretty sure i've come in and bought some cards i'll just go to mlb players i'll just start scrolling through these you know have i bought any cards let's see maybe i'm flipping maybe i bought this lourdes guriel jr to flip boom he's in my inventory i can just go through and list him and sell same if i was coming through and i was flipping equipment i see i got a baskins i'll scroll through here do i have any baskins no maybe i have a batting glove here no oh yep yeah, i have a batting glove here i can come in here i'm pretty sure i bought this to flip one five five four boom i placed that order i maybe maybe i got that out of a pack maybe i bought it to flip i don't know i'm just gonna come in and place the order to sell i don't have to have memorize exactly precisely what orders i got boom we have this one again that is my 2153 order let me make sure i don't undercut myself more than i need to boom i have that placed in got some other orders here i don't know when i bought these for flipping but i bought these to flip at some point i gotta trust that the price is still at a good point come in here we got some stuff selling through now i can come in here boom that card selling i'm not having to memorize my order and see oop that order went through let me go through and instantly sell it oop this order went through let me go through and instantly sell it because again we want to be efficient with our time so that involves coming through and just placing a ton of mass orders you go play a couple conquest games then you come back to your inventory see what you have in your inventory to sell list those bad boys up for sale go play a couple more conquest games maybe come back now cancel some of your buy orders that didn't go through go through hey i got a couple more items in my inventory that i bought must have bought those while flipping let me just go through and sell those right now as that was something i bought during flipping i can just do all that through my inventory i don't have to be tracking it to the t and spending all this time to make sure oh i bought that card let me make sure i go sell it boom bought this card let me make sure i go sell it let's go through and sell stuff every so often every 30 minutes to an hour in between conquest games moments etc maybe i'm playing ranked events br in between games just go through check my inventory list what i've bought every so often go through and cancel what doesn't happen as well now if you want to create a spreadsheet just to, like track your profit because you like those type of things all for it 100 i think that's awesome go for it Main point I'm making is that it's definitely not necessary and we can work without that and we don't have to be micromanaging our orders. That's what it comes down to. We want to simplify our flipping approach. I'm just going to go in. I'm going to put a bunch of mass orders in. I'll buy what I buy. I'll sell what I sell. And then we'll rinse and repeat. I don't have to have some hard stringed process to it. We want to simplify our approach so we can be more efficient with our time overall. Couple final quick pro tips here. Stay away from cards that are outliers. We have this bronze Bobby Wood Jr. right here. He's a thousand subs on the sell now for a bronze card that is the max. But let's say he was 500 subs on the sell now and a thousand on the buy now. You may look at that and say, wow, that's a 400 sub profit for a bronze. I could make a lot of subs off of that. I would recommend staying away from these outlier cards. These any cards that are an outlier is usually a temporary thing. And they're correct back down to the market standards in a very short time period. So you don't want to be stuck holding a bag of Bobby Wood Juniors you bought for 500 subs a piece. All of a sudden, he's quick sell value at 25 subs. Stay away from those. My other pro tip as well is you can have any sub count and start flipping. You can have 1,000, 5,000, 10,000. It does not matter. You can start small. Even if you're just starting out flipping silvers, we can find some really good margins on silvers. Let me scroll back into some silvers here. Even if we're just coming through and flipping Anthony Bender for a couple hundred stubs, AC Mize, you know, guys for 100 to 200 stubs, we can start with a small bankroll and work our way up, whether it's 1,000 stubs, 5,000 stubs, whatever you have, start small and just start learning the market and start flipping. 
I promise you as well, you will get better over time with flipping. You will improve. I guarantee it. Even if you maybe make some mistakes here and there, it's not the end of the world. If you happen to lose stubs on a card, take that opportunity, learn from it so you understand the market better for when your next opportunity to flip arises. So that's what we got today. That is my do's and don'ts of flipping. It'll be the show 22. If you have any questions about flipping at all, definitely be sure to hit me up down in the comment section below. I'll do my best to try to respond to as many people as I can. And of course, you can hop into one of our Twitch streams. Check the link for that down in the description below as well. You can always swing by any of our Twitch streams and try to ask any questions. Of course, we have a Discord community too. Feel free to hop up and join that. Ask any questions in our Discord as well. You enjoyed this video, definitely be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Until next time, I'll catch y'all around.